Hi everyone, my name is Nick Russo, and I've built another study plan for you to help improve your skills. In this video, I'll explain my comprehensive plan to help you pass the Automating Cisco Enterprise Solutions exam. I've got a link to the official Cisco site that explains this exam at the top of the first page, so if you're not sure what it is and you're not sure what's on it, feel free to check that out before digging into the plan. Now, just like the other plans, it's time-based. It's about 10 weeks long with about 10 to 12 hours of study per week. Because this is a professional level of difficulty, you'll want to have some basic skills before you come in. Based on that, I've created kind of two paths that you can take. The first path assumes that you already have your DevNet Associate certification or comparable skills, which means you've probably been doing this for at least a year or so. That's called the quick start plan, and it's got a few weeks of prep work, and then we go straight into the content. For those who are generally brand new to this whole programmability thing, you'll want to start at square one, and I've got a plan for that too. In order to minimize costs, the only investment decision you need to make is Pluralsight. If you're not familiar, it's a low-cost online training platform with about 7,000 courses, all of which are excellent quality and very, very useful. They are traditionally a software development platform, but have recently added a lot more IT operations, networking, databases, system administration, things like that. In my opinion, that makes it a perfect platform for a lot of the new DevNet content. Outside of Pluralsight, everything else in the plan is free. I've included a lot of YouTube videos and self-reading to fill in the gaps, and they'll also provide you some additional context. After all, it's probably a good idea to get opinions and techniques from other people, not just me. That's why my content is less than a quarter of the total of the entire plan, and I'll show you what that looks like when we get into it. At the time of this recording, Pluralsight costs $30 a month, and the plan's 10 weeks long, so it should cost you less than $100 to execute the entire plan. I also encourage you to contact me through my website if you have any questions or suggestions or maybe some of the links don't work over time, just let me know and I'll get it fixed. I want to briefly talk about this copyright at the bottom. I encourage you to download this sheet and make local modifications. Maybe you want to add a column to track your progress or you want to color code different rows. That's great. I encourage you to do that. The reason I've added this copyright is I want to prevent any theft and redistribution. I want to prevent that because I pour a ton of effort into these sheets and I'm trying to help the community by doing it. All that said, let's check the Quick Start tab next. If you already have basic skills, I recommend you spend two weeks just doing some prep work to refresh yourself. The first week covers some important software techniques like Git, writing clean code, HTTP, REST APIs, things like that. Some of these topics are directly relevant for the N-Auto exam, so you do get to double dip a little bit. The second week is a little more focused, and I'm asking you to read my existing Evolving Technologies book. Of course the book is free, but it will round out some of your skills as you make your way through the plan. I'd also recommend you quickly watch all three of my DevNet Associate courses. Even if you've already earned a DevNet Associate, and even if you've already seen my specific courses on it, watching them quickly will be a great refresher. Each one is only two and a half hours long, and walking through them again is a great way to make sure you don't have any gaps in your knowledge. Okay, so maybe you don't have the skills and you need to start at square one. Let's see how that works next. If that's true for you, then just start at the beginning. I link to my existing 10-week DevNet Associate plan along with a YouTube video that's just like this one that explains how you can study for it. At the time of this recording, all of those courses are rated as five stars and it's some of the most popular content on Pluralsight. You'll definitely want to start there if you don't have any pre-existing knowledge but you're looking to build up that skill set. Let's dive into the new content that's specific to the N-Auto exam on the 10-week tab. There are four main topic areas within N-Auto. The first one is a combination of general network automation topics and that consumes the first three weeks of this plan. Week one starts off with day zero provisioning. That includes technologies like iPixie, zero touch provisioning, and Cisco plug and play. I also suggest about 15 minutes of TFTP specific training for my FTP deep dive. Many of these technologies can use TFTP, so if you're not familiar, it's good to invest a little bit of time just to understand it. I've also structured my courses a little differently this time, including some homework challenges at the end of each module. If you have hardware, Try setting up iPixie using the skills I teach in the course. 
Then we move into network automation using Python-based CLI methods. The focus is on NetMiko, which is a popular open source wrapper for Paramiko that makes it easy to interact with network devices. My friend and colleague, Kirk Byers, is the inventor and maintainer of that library, and he has many excellent training resources, which I've linked here. In my opinion, he is the ultimate expert, so it's great to learn directly from him. As a final challenge for this week, try using Nexus and ASA with NetMiko. In my courses, I stick to iOS XE just to keep things simple, but trying out other platforms that are used in enterprise networks is, again, a great way to expand your skill set. Week 2 finishes up the CLI-based network automation by introducing Ansible. Cisco Devnet has a lot of useful learning labs to cover this topic, and I've linked a few of them here. After learning about Ansible and completing the challenge, the plan introduces model-driven programmability using Yang. Yang is a relatively difficult topic, but I've included some tail F deep dives and DevNet Learning Labs to help you wrap your arms around it. After you understand the fundamentals of Yang, Week 3 adds in NetConf, which is a transport mechanism for Yang modeled data. You can use NetConf directly from Python, or within Ansible, or within other frameworks too, like Nornir or whatever else. I've made four Postman collections to support this plan, and the first one is for RestConf. Feel free to download those and test them in the DevNet sandbox or in your own environment, and they're great for exploring Yang data in greater depth. The challenge includes combining NetConf and Ansible together, which is a great way to do model-driven programmability in a concurrent way. The week ends with a lot of content on model-driven telemetry. This is a mix of reading, DevNet learning labs, and video training. It's also a difficult topic, and it's not the kind of thing you'll generally get working in 10 minutes. I recommend you try and build your own dashboards using the TIG stack as a challenge. In my courses, I explain what the TIG stack is, so if you're not familiar, be sure to check those out. Week 4 begins the Meraki section of the plan, starting with basic Meraki API skills. Be sure to check out the free Meraki Postman collection because this might help lower the barrier for entry if you've never worked with Meraki before. I've also linked official SDKs for Meraki, DNA Center, and SD-WAN, and these can be helpful if you're not very skilled in writing Python code. Next, we'll cover Meraki networks. In the Pluralsight course, we'll create new networks for access points and cameras, then add devices to those networks, then we'll test them in real life. I have a lot more to say about the cameras, though. We'll dive into the MVSense analytics on those cameras and a couple other minor features along the way. If you really want to challenge yourself, try to use the TIG stack to collect analytics from the MVSense Analytics API, which is really difficult, but if you can do it, then you're in great shape. Week 5 starts with Meraki Captive Portals, both the basic and external varieties. I'll test these out on my iPhone so you can see how they work from the perspective of a real client. The Meraki documentation is useful, but it's very complicated, so it's definitely worth reading, but it probably shouldn't be your only resource. After you learn about that, I'll challenge you to build your own external captive portal using Flask. Next, we move into the location and scanning API, which I also covered in my dev core classes. We'll test this one using webhook.site and my personal iPhone. Webhook.site is just an HTTP receiver, and it's really useful for testing webhooks. We'll finish up with alert webhooks to monitor Meraki health, also using webhook.site. This challenge is the same as what I demonstrated in the DevCore course, which is to build your own location receiver. This is tricky because you'll need valid SSL certificates, and you'll need to roll those in to your HTTPS server. After two weeks of Meraki, we'll move into DNA Center during week six. Again, it's good to grab the Postman collection before going too far into the plan. Use this as a reference as you learn. DevNet has many labs on DNA Center automation, which I highly recommend, and I've linked into the plan. Once you learn how it works, try to replicate your own work environment as a challenge. If you can do that, you're well on your way to mastering the DNA Center automation tasks. Next, we move on to templates using the Velocity Template Language, or VTL. Very few networkers have ever heard of this language, but I've built a tool to make it easy to learn. I demonstrate the tool in my courses, but of course I encourage you to test it on your own. Once you understand how it works, try and build your own templates to represent your work environment in the DevNet sandboxes. 
In week 7, we'll finish up DNA Center by checking out some miscellaneous tools. First, we focus on the Command Runner, which is useful for running commands on devices. It's intuitive and relatively easy to understand. For those who have been following me for a few years, you've probably heard of the Rack project that I wrote in Ansible. This is basically a DNA Center flavored version of that project, except a little more advanced. Next, we covered the DNA Center path trace using a mix of Pluralsight courses and YouTube. This feature is handy for revealing problems in the network and goes much deeper than Traceroute. After that, we'll cover DNA Assurance to measure the health of sites, networks, and clients. This is a very popular feature of DNA Center, and I also covered it in a DevCore course with advanced API techniques. Last, we explored DNA Center notifications using webhooks. This is similar in concept to the Meraki webhooks we looked at earlier in the plan, and it's useful for event-based network management. At the end of the week, I challenge you to build your own webhook listener for custom events relevant to you. One feature of DNA Center that isn't usually in the spotlight is the third-party integration. I've included a little bit of reading on those topics because it's hard to get hands-on and they aren't very common, but they're important to know for the exam. After finishing up with DNA Center, we introduce SD-WAN in week 8. Before you watch my Pluralsight training, be sure to understand the basic SD-WAN architecture. My friend Tim put together a video series on YouTube, which is about 90 minutes long, that explains how all the pieces fit. It isn't related to programmability at all, but if you don't understand it, you're going to have a really hard time automating anything within SD-WAN. Be sure to download the Postman collection, just like for the other products, and use it as a reference in case you get stuck. There are also plenty of DevNet Learning Labs to get started. DevNet has also published a 13-course series, which discusses SD-WAN APIs at a high level. Because it's so long, I consider these optional. Watch a few of the videos and decide for yourself whether to continue. At the end of this week, I want you to do two things. First, I want you to use Google Chrome to explore the API. After you watch my course, you'll understand what I mean. Also, try to improve the SDK by adding input data validation and type checking. Doing these tasks isn't a good use of time during the Pluralsight course, but it's a great way to improve your general Python skills. Week 9 introduces the real meat and potatoes of SD-WAN automation, which is templates and policies. SD-WAN templates are not trivial, so it's best to do some reading early in the process. We'll create and attach templates to vSmarts to move them into vManage mode. After we've got the templates taken care of, we'll cover SD-WAN policy management, which is a multi-step process. Now there's plenty of flexibility here, as you probably guessed, so it's worth dedicating a few hours to reading about all the different knobs. Once you have that extra knowledge, I'll challenge you to develop some of your own custom policies. Last, we'll cover miscellaneous APIs like administration, dashboard, real-time monitoring, and certificate management. These are less difficult than policy management, but more commonly used for daily operations. As a final challenge, try to extend the SDK from the course to include methods you think are useful, or maybe they're useful for your business environment. Week 10 is the final week of the plan, and this is where we go into exam mode. The goal is to laser focus on the most relevant content, brushing away all the contextual stuff you learned over the past 9 weeks. First, watch the general network automation course again, and try to replicate it. Build your own lab from scratch to sharpen your skills. That includes ZTP, the basic day-to-day -day operation, and telemetry collection. After that, watch the product-specific courses on Meraki, DNA Center, and SD-WAN, preferably in that order. This will be a great way to prepare yourself right before you take the test. Some of you know that I passed three DevNet exams in one day back in February, and I blogged about all three. I suggest investing a few minutes to read my personal opinions about the N-Auto exam because you may find that useful. I want to finish up with two more points. First, this plan is probably going to change. Over time, sometimes links change, sometimes resources go away, sometimes YouTube videos are updated or deleted, etc. I recommend checking back every few months to my website, downloading the newest sheet, and picking up where you left off if you're in the middle of studying. Second, I want you to contact me if you have any questions or suggestions or you find any problems with it. The best way to contact me is through my website at njrusmc.net. 
Let me know how the plan is working for you, and I'll do whatever I can to improve it. All that said, best of luck in your studies, and I hope to see you around later. Take care.